is good all the time good morning church and all our viewers we hope you are all staying strong and staying inspired in the lord praise the lord we are thankful to the lord for a wonderful and anointed media service last week especially the message by reverend philip daniel entitled receiving promotion through affliction now let's remember the book of psalms chapter 105 verse 17 to 21 he sent the man before them joseph who was sold as a slave they hurt his feet with fetters he was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass the word of the lord tested him the king sent and released him the ruler of the people let him go free he made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions hallelujah i am brother nigel your presider for this week our team from the lord for 2024 is look up and see your salvations and promotions draw nigh a year of great promotions for his glory which is found in the book of habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry praise the lord may the good lord continue to use us to be a blessing to many and even unto the nations of the world amen let us continue to be united in prayer for the gospel to reach all nations praise the lord Many thanks once again for all your earnest prayers and faithful support for our Digital Discipleship Church program. By the way, our presenters for this week are the following. Scripture reading will be done by Sister Sandra. Worship reading will be led by Brother Carlo J and Worship Team. And exhortation will be done by Sister Dana Winson. Praise the Lord. Prayer for the Nation of Singapore will be led by Rev. Philip Daniel from FGCCI Main Church. The Word of God will be shared by Pastor Louis Matthew from FGCCI Clang Church. Closing and benediction will be conducted by Rev. Dr. David Quay, Senior Pastor and Spiritual Overseer of FGCCI. Praise the Lord. Stay tuned Church and let's look forward to a great year together. Good morning Church and all our viewers. Today's scripture reading is taken from Psalm 105 verse 1 to 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing psalms to Him. Talk of all His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. Remember His marvelous works which He has done, His wonders, and the judgments of His mouth. O seed of Abraham, His servant, you children of Jacob, His chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers His covenant forever, the word which He commanded for a thousand generations. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Amen. Stay tuned, Church, and may God bless you. God is good. God is good. Hi, Church, and all our viewers. And let's focus our heart in worshiping the Lord. This is my cry. Before you alone, it be 
teachers and all our viewers. Today, I would like to share my exhortation or title, An Attitude of Gratitude. Gratitude means express our thanks and appreciation. We are encouraged to give thanks in everything, even those difficult moments and daily circumstances, knowing that God's grace is sufficient for those who are in Christ. Here are a few points on gratitude. Number one, recognizing God's blessings. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. This is a powerful instruction. We are to approach God's presence with thanksgiving and praises. Gratitude begins with recognizing the multitude of blessings bestowed upon us by our Heavenly Father. From the bread in our lungs to the love of family and friends. When we acknowledge that every good and perfect gift comes from Him, our hearts overflow thanksgiving. As we cultivate an attitude of gratitude, it transforms our perspective. Instead of focusing on what we lack, we begin to see the abundance of blessings that surround us each day. Being thankful from the heart is necessary for receiving of God's continual favour in our life. An attitude of gratitude is also a form of worship to God. Our spirits are refreshed and renewed in Him as we thank Him and praise God in worship. Our gratitude belongs first to God because without Him, we would have nothing. God is good, goodness is part of His character and essence and He is good all the time. Amen. Point number two, gratitude in all circumstances. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This verse challenges us to give thanks in all circumstances, whether in times of abundance, joy or sorrow. We are called to maintain a spirit of thanksgiving. It takes our attention off our problems and focus on God. Notice that Paul doesn't say to give thanks only when things are going well, but in all circumstances. Even in the midst of trials and challenges, we can find reason to be thankful because we serve a God who is always with us, guiding us through every storm, and God's faithfulness endures forever. It's a choice we make regardless of our situation. Our gratitude in difficult times reflect our trust in God, knowing that He works all things together for our good. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we stop seeing the good in our lives and start complaining, we cause many problems for ourselves. Many doors are open to the enemy through complaining and murmuring. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am in there to be content. While we are waiting for God to answer our prayer, be thankful for all that God has already done for us. A heart that lack of gratitude can lead us to be complained or murmuring about the things we are unhappy in our life. The Israelites are the perfect example. Because of their unbelief, and lack of gratitude, they literally wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. Point number three, the power of grateful heart. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present your request to God. A heart filled with gratitude has the power to transform our prayer life. Everything we ask God for should be preceded 
with and accompanied by thanksgiving. We should pray with thankful heart for what we have already had and thank Him at once for hearing and answering our prayers. When we are thankful, it opens the door for God to answer our prayer and bring blessings into our life. When we approach God with thanksgiving, our anxiety diminishes and we experience His peace that surpasses all understanding. Instead of approaching God with anxiety and fear, we are invited to come before Him with a heart filled with gratitude. Gratitude opens the doors to intimacy with God and strengthen our relationship with Him as we acknowledge His provision and care. Thankful heart keeps us in a place of humility and dependency on God as we recognize how much we need Him. A thankful heart reminds us that ultimately God is our provider, that all blessings and gifts are graciously given to us by His hand. Point number four, overflowing with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter 3 verse 70 says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of our Lord Jesus, Give thanks to God the Father through Him. These verses remind us to do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to God the Father through Him. It's not limited to our spiritual practice but extends to every aspect of our life. Be thankful not only makes us happy but it affects others in a powerful way. Expressing appreciation blesses the people around us but it's also good for us because it releases joy in our life. It contains the power to encourage and to motivate a person to keep going, the power to lift them up and change what might have been a bad day into a good one. Conclusion Let's give thanks not only for the blessings we have received, but also for the challenges that deepen our faith. Gratitude is not merely an emotion, but a lifestyle characterized by a continual recognition of God's goodness. In the book of Psalm 107 verse 1, King David exclaimed, Give thanks to the Lord for His good and His love endures forever. Amen. We give thanks not only for what God has done for us, but also for who He is, good, loving and faithful. Thank you for listening and God bless us all. God is good all the time. Put a song of praise. Good morning, church, and to all our viewers. Today, we come with a humble heart to submit the nation of Singapore to you, Lord. Let us pray. Let us come to the throne of grace. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, we offer the nation of Singapore to you, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Singapore as a new Prime Minister, Mr. Lawrence Wong. Lord. We praise you, Father, for bringing this new Prime Minister Lord, to govern the country of Singapore. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the past, past Prime Ministers, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, that you have brought to Singapore to govern Singapore, Lord. We thank you for Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, Mr. Go Chok Tong, and Mr. Lee Shen Lu. Lord, we thank you, Lord, through their governance, Lord, the country has prospered and progressed, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, we know that you are a great God, and because of your goodness that you put upon the nation, we acknowledge, Lord, that the fruit of all hard work has only come the blessing of you, O Lord. Oh yes, Lord. It is you alone that grants peace in the land of Singapore. Oh yes, Lord. Oh yes, Lord. We know, Lord. We know, Lord. It is you who bring prosperity. We thank you, Lord, for all this generation of leaders that have brought from Singapore, Lord. And right now, Lord, we just want to lift up the new Prime Minister, Mr. Lord of Oh yes, Lord. We pray, Father. We pray for the governance of the 
church to be your community. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. We pray, Father, that your hands will be upon me. We know exactly, Lord, as we look into you, your heart, Lord, your heart upon the heart of your minister. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. That's what Romans 13 1 says. Let every person be subjected to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from and those who, who exist and have been instituted by God previously. We pray for Mr. Lawrence Walmart to be instituted by the Lord. And we pray, Father. We pray for you. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. We pray for a heart of integrity. We pray for a heart of discernment. We pray for a heart of justice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As Proverbs 28 2 says, With a man of understanding and knowledge, the stability of a land will long continue. Oh, yes, Lord. Most of us so we pray. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the people of Singapore as well. Everybody who is under the government's control. Oh, yes, Lord. His new cabinet members are not the new government are not cabinet members. The civil service are not the she will be leading in And we pray for new policies, good policies that will bring up the country and the nation of Singapore. At the same time, we pray, Lord. We pray for revival to take place, Lord. That all the Christians who are in Singapore will join together and keep on praying. For the nation, O Lord, to be one in you, O Lord, to allow your supernatural power and your supernatural blessing to flow into the land of Singapore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Jesus, name above all. Praise God, all glory to the Lord. I'm very thankful to the Lord today again, once more time. God uh, choose me and I have him here to share the word of God with all of you. So let's see, uh, we listen the word of God and uh, we will find out how God speaks to us according to the Bible and because around the world, in present situation, everybody is, 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 is living without the purpose. And everybody is confused. And they, know, they, they don't know what is going on and what is the purpose of their life. So today, according to the Bible, we are trying to find our purpose. The, what is purpose of our lives on this world? So, the people trying to waking, but they don't know because they are confused. And church, you know that God has something good in your life. He already stored in the heavenly places something special for you, for me, and for everyone. We have to find out what is that things for us so when you spend time with the god you can find what is things is necessary for you and god is always provide the things which is necessary for you not what you like not what is your choice but when you are spending time with god then god gives necessity thing in your lives in the children's life in the families and in the nations because god knows what is what thing is good for us for our lives and for our souls so let's see how we can find our purpose what is the purpose uh, in this world so six signs that you may not be believing in God's purpose that thing six things which when you do that 
so that means you are not living in a god's purpose the six things which show that you are not living in god's purpose and today our main verse is psalm 57 verse 2 says i cried out to god most high to god who fulfilled his purpose for me this is key in understanding god's purpose for your life church god has numbered your days and will fulfill every purpose he has for you church here six signs that you don't have much purpose in your life the first you are blatantly living in sin church let's start with the obvious here if you are blatantly disobeying the bible you are not living in purpose and you will can certainly experience sense of aimless in your life this is one is pretty straightforward so we don't need to spend too much time here church because we don't obey we don't follow his word word bible saying to us when we follow the bible's purpose when we follow the word of god then we can find out the purpose because we disobeying his word we disobeying what he wants so that means we are don't living our life according to the god's purpose and the second thing is you lack joy and excitement okay if you wake up every day feel apathy or death or total burden and you don't know what is going on in your life and you will think how i can do this thing in your life and after that if, if you think a hey, lot of things you have to do how you will do you won't have joy you don't have happiness in your life because you don't living your life according to the god's purpose so these second things can find out you are not living according to the god's purpose so church when you live according to the god's purpose when you follow word of god then this all burden you won't feel in your life you will feel joy you will feel excitement in your life happiness you will spend good time your family you will uh, you will find the way how to uh, spend good time with your friends uh, with the fellowship persons so church because you are living according to the bible because when you are not living according to the god's purpose you won't be having happiness and joy if you don't have happiness and joy in your life you can find out you are not living according to the god's purpose and the third thing is you work so that you don't have to work so it's, you you know that you know the feelings of uh, pointless work you are like you go to office clock in and after that you just finish your work and just come back home you just killing your time but church when you living according to the god's purpose when you living how god want you to live then you won't see the time you will focus on your work because the bible say whatever you do do unto the lord then you won't see how much the time you doing over time you're not doing because you're living according to the bible you're living according to the god's purpose you won't see the time your time won't be uh, having anything for you because bible say whatever you do unto the lord so you will see the god's purpose so church this is was the third things and uh, would you say that uh, uh, this kinds of joy characterize your life and work if not you may need a uh, rethink where you are at agar praise god and church you feel that there's a uh, there's a uh, third things 
is you feel stuck like you are moving somewhere else and there's a traffic and you can't move with your car you're driving your car from one place to another place like the present times uh, there's everywhere traffic is so jam so when you come out from the house you saw on the highway there's a lot of car cars and the uh, road is jam so you are totally stuck you can you can't find the way how you go left how you go right and how you go to your destiny as the same thing is happen sometime in your lives when we we are going to our destiny but sometimes we are confused sometimes devil uh, can uh, can distract our vision and sometimes our f- uh, friends sometimes our colleagues sometimes our relatives they they can they can uh, they can say different things when they will say different thing to you church our mind will distract we having a focus like we are driving to our destiny and we know that that is a place where have we have to go the same things when we having a purpose in your our life so sometimes our friends our colleagues our relatives even our from our, our families so when they are giving different different situations no a hey brother you do like that no 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 brother is this is not good for you for your family don't do this like so like like a many voices when you will listen from surroundings so you can distract from your vision you can distract from your uh, point where you want to go you can distract from your destiny because many voices can distract your choices many voices can change your choices church when you having god's purpose in your life you won't listen what the people are saying you won't listen what your friends saying you won't listen what your colleagues saying you won't listen what your family saying because you know what is god's purpose in your life so church today we have to find out where we are stuck and why we are stuck and how we can come out from this stuckness so this is a time to find out the way so church that was the third thing uh sorry the fourth thing the first thing was you lack joy and excitement when you won't have these things you can find out you are not living according to the god's purpose and second thing you don't feel much fulfillment in your life so that is a th- that was a second things if you have in your life so you can find out you are not living according to god's purpose and the third thing was you feel stuck so that was the third things can mention that if you have in your life if you are stuck somewhere else you can find out you are not living according to the god purpose and the fourth things you have no direction sometime when we drive the car to the one place we can have a direction and sometime map they give you a different direction if one side is stuck you can find out the way oh if you are going straight and they are stuck the ways can find out you have to go left they can find the easy way for you shorter way be sometimes shorter way and sometimes uh, less traffic way they can find of you well, find out the way for you means you have no direction but when you don't have direction when you don't have any direction so that means you can find out you're not living according to the god's purpose so that means if you don't know god's purpose for your life you constantly feel a sense of aimlessness so that means you don't have any aim in your life you cannot find why you are living in the world so that means not all church today we have to find we have to find because you feel as though you are wandering from the from the things to things without any forward progress nothing excites you and you don't have any specific goals you are working towards unlikely the israelis who wandered 40 years yet till had a goal the israelis 
who came out from the Egypt and 40 years they was wandering but they still have a purpose and the purpose was promised land so today we have to find out what is our purpose in our life and what is a God's purpose in our life church church you have to regain your sense of purpose and discover what God has for your life sometimes we have a purpose in your life but we lose we have a vision in our, in our lives we lose so now we have time to regain what we lost now we have to find out what was the purpose in our life of God so church now is a time now is a time to find out the purpose so this was the fourth thing the so church it is all the things you have if your life you can find out you are not living in God's purpose like first thing was you are blatantly living in a sin and second thing you lack joy and excitement the third thing was you don't feel much fulfillment in your life and the fifth thing is uh, you work that you don't have to work and the sixth thing you feel stuck church these are things we can find when you are not living according to the god's purpose so church six way to regain your purpose and that things six things we have to know that how we can find how we can regain god's purpose in our life because everybody having purpose in their lives and god's must have a purpose in everybody's life sometimes we lost sometimes when we're busy in our family sometimes we're busy in our work sometimes we're busy in around the world we lost what was the God's purpose in our lives. So today we have to find out. So regain, how to regain God's purpose in our life. There are three, six things, six things must we have to do to regain God's purpose in our lives. So church, again, let's start with the obvious. If you, the, if you feel the purposeless, ask God. Ask God, give you wisdom and knowledge and direction. Church, very clearly, very clearly, uh, James 1st, 5th, uh, chapter 1, verse say, 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, clearly Bible says, Church, clearly Bible says, for, uh, Peter, uh, sorry, James, James 1st, verse 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask god who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be give him he give generously not little bit you can ask someone something maybe they give you a little bit if you ask some money to someone maybe they give you a little bit maybe someone if you ask food for someone to someone maybe they give you a little bit but church, when you ask God, He's our Heavenly Father. When you ask God, He give you generously, not little bits, not in limited quantity. He give you abundantly, generously, because He having a good heart. He having a big heart, and nobody have the type of that kind of heart how much god loves to us how much he loves you just we have to regain what we lost so let's pray to god for the wisdom and knowledge who gives us generously so just the sixth thing which we have to do and we regain our purpose so church, the first thing is go to God in prayer. Church, again, let's start with the obvious. 
church we have to pray we have to pray like whoever having a lack of wisdom and knowledge they have to pray to god and god always give generously church incredibly god good news god wants to give you a purpose god want to give you a purpose they don't want to leave you without a purpose so church he want to bestow divine wisdom on you it's not like god is holding out on you to make you miserable no no he desires you to have a joyful ambitious purposeful life ask god for purpose and expect him to give it to you and believe that and wait for time wait for the time which is good for you don't try to make time on yourself find out pray to god and ask god he will answer you he won't leave you just he won't leave you just find out the way and the second thing dig into god's word dig dig like like if you if you are if you are pulling something or dig means you go into 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 the sand into the earth pull and church bible says dig into the word go deeper and deeper in the word of god when you have a wisdom you will go more deep like dig in to god's word when you were listen the word of god when you read the word of god try go more deeper to find what is the purpose of that word what you are listening or you reading because the word of god always have a purpose word of god always have a power word of god always have energy word of god always having some reason in your life there's not without of reason the church dig into the word because psalm 119 verse 105 says your word is a lamp of my feet and a light to my path and god's words bring the light and is always is always remove darkness for us he always bring us in the light the church bible you learn how to live wisely in god word in god's world which is the first step towards finding your purpose so church uh, the first thing how you can regain go into the prayers and dig into the word of god and the third thing church determine your gifts and strengths everybody have a gift of god everybody have a strength but church find out how much you have a strength what gift of god you already have in your life and how you have to use that gifts which you have in your life and god given to you the church that is most important things we have to find out so church god already have given a specific gifts and strength to you maybe you are a math whiz or a wise counselor and church maybe you have a mind for electronics or business maybe you have a great organizing people or church maybe getting things done uh, god's purpose for you probably involves the things you have already good to you the church there's a many gifts you already have in your life you have to find out which gift you have in your life sometime we have a gifts but we doesn't know how to use sometime we had gifts in our life from the god but we couldn't find out where is the gift and what is the gifts so today we have to find out and we have to use that gift in our life that's then only we can live according to the god's purpose and that's just third things yeah first thing go to god in prayer second thing dig into god's words third thing determine your gifts and strength and the fourth thing is determine your passion just what is one things you have particularly passionate about really this can be anything 
business art economics alleviating poverty whatever if money wasn't an issue what would you love to do so church determining your passion often help you figure out what god has called to you you have to find out what why god call you what is your calling what have you a purpose in your life so church god can find out for you what is your calling but for that you have to spend time with god for that you have to do fellowship with the god you for that you have to read and listen the word of god then only you can find out what is the purpose of your life such as other one is bring others into your life don't go alone don't stay separate don't go away from the world don't go away from the families don't grow away from the families friends such so as bring others to you bring others to in your life bring others to in church bring others to in 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 your fellowship and that fellowship must be uh, in a god don't live alone must be spend time with the righteous people must uh, time uh, spend time uh, in a fellowship in with the church with the church people with the youth with the leaders with the pastors with the apostles must spend time for the fellowship according to the bible that is your safety church church proverbs 11 14 says where there is no guidance a people falls but in an abundance of counselors there is a safety in other words one of the main ways god help us find your purpose in through others so that means through others you can find your purpose they can help out you find the counselor find the counselors who can counsel you who can guide you according to the god church just another one is take a solitude retreat sometime it can be it incredibly help to get away from it all and take some unhurried time to think pray and journal you don't have to spend a week in the woods for this to be effective even just a day away from the hustle and grind can be hugely rewarding so church during this retreat allow yourself to simply be still and to bond to pond to ask god for direction and listen his word god give you direction god give you the way god uh, give you the uh, give you the uh, place how you can go easily how you can move out from the stuck place how you can go away when the people are trying to stop you how god can give you the wisdom how god can give you the knowledge how can god uh, bring you out from all kind of stuckness but for that things you have to do all the things but god want us to do not according our choice not according our 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 vision not accorded uh, according to our wish find out god's wish find out god's purpose in our life says and church in the end trust god at end whatever we do whatever we listen whatever we try to do at the end we have to believe we have to trust god so because other than god there's no other option trying to discover your life purpose can be a stressful when you find your purpose maybe sometime you feel stress it might be possible to be stressful but church church listen it can seems like such big big confusing this is can be a frustrated subject such you want to move forward you still have to move forward but you are not sure how you have to uh, you have to move forward but you not don't know how you want to find your purpose but you feel like you are aimlessly wandering you 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 find you are aimlessly wandering but you still chase 
says God still have lost still so God still loves you when you spend time when you pray to God when you do fellowship with him he will show he will definitely show the purpose of your life in the world such as you have to spend time with him today you have to decide you can trust god to lead you where he want you to go because bible clearly says psalm 23 verse 2 to 3 says he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake you may feel confused but god doesn't you may confuse you might be uh, feel confused but just god nothing god won't feel confused god will feel any confusion god having a having a purpose without confusing so you have to find out god then you will find out your purpose such so as today at the end purpose in a christ centered perspective so church our program our life our visions our choices always be according to the word of god and jesus christ will be the center in our life because there's no other way so church there's a six things just now we find out when we are living and when we have in our life so means we are not living according to god's purpose the first thing you are blatantly living in a sin the second thing you have lack of joy and excitement the third thing is you don't feel much fulfillment in the life and the fourth thing is you work so that you don't have to work and the fifth thing you feel stuck and the sixth thing you have no direction this sixth thing if you have in your life that means you're not living according to the god's purpose and when you lost your purpose when you lost your purpose your vision so that means that sixth thing you have again need to do to regain what was your purpose and the first thing go to god in the prayer and the second thing dig into god's word and the third thing is determine your passion the fifth thing is uh bring others into your life don't be stay alone bring others through uh others in your life and the sixth thing take a solitude retreat your passion so search this all the things we must have in our life to find out what is the purpose in our life so god's purpose you must have and you must live according to the god's purpose not with your choice or your vision or your aim so church today is a time to find so i pray for all of you and you also have to spend time in a pray in front of god to find out the purpose so may god bless to all of you morning church and not our viewers thank you once again for tuning in to FGCCI Media Channel. And I hope that you are richly blessed by this week's media service. And I also hope that you are staying strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to take this time to thank all the presenters for the wonderful efforts, especially our dear brother Nigel for his excellent presiding. And also Sister Sandra for her excellent scripture reading. I also want to especially thank uh, brother Carlo J for leading us into a wonderful time of worship in God's presence. Hallelujah. I also want to especially thank Sister Dana Winson for giving us truly an excellent exhortation entitled The Attitude of Gratitude. It's truly an amazing and very blessed and insightful exhortation. We are all so blessed. I also want to especially thank Reverend Philip Daniel for leading us to pray for the nation of Singapore. Singapore is a neighbor nation of Malaysia and recently they just have a new Prime Minister Lawrence Wong that has continued to pray for our good neighbor nations or for good progress and revival 
in the nation of Singapore. Praise the Lord. And I want to especially uh, thank Pastor Louis Matthew from FGCCI Clang Church for his wonderful message today entitled What is the Purpose of Our Life? And, and a few points he shared about how to know that we are not following in God's purpose. It's truly very insightful and very blessed. And also share with us as well how we can know God's purpose through prayer and through the study of God's word and being God's presence regularly. And in summary, I just want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. So in verse 14, For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the fool should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. Praise the Lord. So it's very important to, to know that we are the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ and everyone is given different gifts and given talents and we must learn to work together. Like the hand and the feet must learn to work together. The feet will walk to the place where the things where the hand wants to take. Because the hand cannot walk, but the feet can walk. But the feet cannot take, but the hand can take the things that we want. That's how we need to work together as a team. So in fulfilling God's purpose for our life, we always work as a timber in the body of Christ. And there's a main purpose that Jesus has already given to us when he ascended to heaven. is found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And so it's so important to be part of a local church, believing in the salvation of of Jesus Christ because once someone comes to know the Lord that is our purpose just to make disciples of all nations and first we their souls need to be saved they need to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ they need to receive the gifts of salvation by the grace of God and they need to be disciples and wait for them to be disciples not alone but in the body of Christ in the local church as a they can be taught, as the scripture says, and they can learn, and, and they have other people that they can observe and they can model those more mature Christians. And so it's so important to be part of a local church because the purpose that God has for our life flows through the local church. Not, we are not a lone ranger, so to say. We are a body, so we work as a team. And the purpose of God for our life works through the church. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 28. In Matthew 16, verse 18. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's why it's so important that we belong to a local church, to the body of Christ, and we work as a team. Because God's purpose of our life is fulfilled through timber, through the body of Christ, to the local church that God places. Hallelujah. And I would like to encourage you to be faithful to your church and for your purpose flows through the vision of the church and through the command that Jesus command, commanded us in Matthew 28, verse 18. That is the purpose of the church. Then, there is a, then that is our purpose. And we need to work and flow through the church. Hallelujah. And achieving the purpose 
for our life. And I hope that you will be blessed today and hope that you are put into, uh, into application in your life what you have learned today. And truly we are blessed by the wonderful message that my pastor Luis Matthew. And let us continue to have a godly purpose to find God, we will find our purpose. And when we are and we are when we are with God and we were able to have a direction, the purpose of what God has for us, and we are able to move forward and become spiritually mature and able to fulfill the command of the Lord in Matthew 28, verse 18, that is to make disciples of all nations and to teach them all that the Lord has taught us. Hallelujah. And I hope that you are blessed by this short summary. And as usual, we're going to give our thanks and our offerings to the Lord. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we lift up, Lord, this thanks and His offerings and this love gift before Thy throne of grace, bless, Lord, this giving for the advancement of Your kingdom and for the glory of Your name. Lord, that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in every nation, that we are able to fulfill the purpose You have for us, that is to make disciples in every nation. Return back, Lord, the blessings upon every giver, hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. Let your name be greatly magnified and glorified. In all this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, church and all the viewers, for tuning in to FGCCI Media Channel. And before we conclude this week's media service, I'd like to give you a benediction. Let's close our eyes and hearken to the benediction for this week. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace. May the Lord stretch up His hands of favor and of blessings and the providence and of protection upon you, upon your family and upon your loved ones. May you know the purpose of God in your life. May you continue to fulfill the purpose God has for you through your church for the glory of His name. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, church, and all the viewers once again for tuning in to FGCCI Media Channel. Let us continue to stay strong and stay inspired in the Lord together.